Hello and welcome. Today in this episode, we are bringing uh, our Dr. Ala Sheta. He's a full professor of machine learning uh, from the University of Southern Connecticut. Uh, he has worked uh, uh, in developing mobile application to predict the sleep apnea without, uh, with high accuracy. He has published several man manuscripts on of it and then he has presented uh, on the conference. So welcome, uh, Dr. Sheta. Thank you so much. Perfect. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. And we want to know, I know that you're really busy uh, in the next 10 to 12 minutes. We want to know everything about what you're doing it. I know it's not a justice uh, to your uh, great work. Uh, I will start very beginning for our viewers who doesn't know much about sleep apnea. So can you tell us about uh, sleep apnea, what it is and uh, how much it is prevalent in, in US or uh, rest of the world? All right, so sleep apnea is one of the respiratory uh, problems that, that uh, a human being can, can suffer from. Uh, it, it relates actually to some, some problem that can happen uh, for the muscles, uh, relaxation in, in, the, in, in, the, in the mouse, the tongue and surrounding soft tissues. So what happened is when, when this area uh, relaxes during sleep, so sometimes you feel like you are not getting enough air to flow, and, and that cause uh, a waking. So, so, so the person will wake up uh, several times and this can happen maybe every, uh, like in, in a minute, maybe two, three times so that that can cause a bad sleep. So the consequence of, of sleep apnea is really, is really uh, huge because if you do not get, get enough sleep, that might, that might need that you, you, you will not be able to perform well during your daily life activity. And the problem actually is not that this is a disease that, that somebody, like a, a small percentage, but actually in 2015, there was like some estimation that about 22 million American people are suffering from sleep apnea. And that's not only the problem, but the problem is that most of those people are not diagnosis of, of sleep apnea. So there is no way to really help those people to, to, to get back to normal. And uh, some statistics also mentioned that that uh, that that this is happening for for men uh, like twice as it happened for women, and uh, and of course uh, the if if we look at the impact or or the the effect uh, of 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 sleep apnea for for people uh, that that can cause some types of heart disease problems, stroke, uh, diabetes. So of course, one one of the problem for people with diabetes is that you know, they do not sleep well. So that, that's a problem, uh, early death and, and so on and so on. And uh, the fatigue that is caused by less sleep, of course, is, is, like, is like huge. And economy wise, it was estimated that about $150 billion are lost in the USA because of sleep uh, apnea or sleep problems. So such as work accidents, uh, motor vehicle accidents, loss of productivity and so on. So that, that, that can, you know, describe how big is this problem. Wow, it's such a big problem. Those numbers are from yeah. 2015. So imagine in six years, those numbers may have gone up or, uh, from 22 million to even more. Um, so yeah. question is, the good news is that we can actually diagnose it. So what are the current modalities of diagnosing sleep apnea? And what are the gaps which made you uh, take this uh, route for using AI? Yeah, actually the normal diagnosis procedure is uh, the patient has to spend a night on a sleep center uh, so maybe eight or nine hours uh, of sleep. And then of course, while he's sleeping, he need to get like maybe a little bit more than 16 prob uh, hooked uh, in, 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 on the face or uh, in the chest or in the hand or like, you know, everywhere so that we can collect some measurements about like heartbeats, about freezing, about, you know, uh, 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 blood pressure, all these kind of things. So, so, and that's that's a common procedure. The problem with this procedure is, of course, uh, sometimes if you would like to reserve, uh, uh, you know, um, a night in a sleep center that might take months before you can get uh, one. And also the cost is between like $3,000 to $5,000. And the, the, the issue is more likely the procedure to diagnose uh, the, the collected data is basically depends on a technician. So the technician spent uh, some good amount of time looking at the measurement taken by the sensors and, and try to locate places where there is a kind of a repetitive pulse behavior. And from that, he can know if there is a sleep apnea, how severe it is. So that, that's a common procedure right now uh, 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 we, 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 that, that we have. Of course, it, it, sometimes, you know, if, if you talk about kids, 
kids might have sleep uh, apnea also. And, you know, it's going to be very hard for kids really to, to get adapted with this type of, of problems or this type of diagnosis going to a sleep center, spend the night. So, so that's, that's the current state of the art. Uh, I mean, like what, what people are doing now. So in that chat, it's cumbersome. It takes time and it is very much in, in there is a lot uh, interpersonal uh, variability in, in managing some of these uh, sleep studies uh, and those exactly. results and all. Um, exactly. and you are a full professor of AI and machine learning. So tell us uh, the utility of AI uh, in medicine in general, uh, what has been done so far in other fields or what's your take on utilization of AI neural network or machine learning? Okay. In fact, uh, when, when people talk about AI, it looks like some, some, uh, some, I mean, people try to understand the concept of AI or machine learning, how we teach a machine, how a machine can learn. I, I would like to simplify this as much as possible. In, in real life, if let's say, for example, we are uh, having some, uh, you know, some money and we would like to spend this money for uh, like daily expenses or monthly expenses. So what we do, we have like income. So this income is the input and then we have expenses. So these expenses are the output. And in the middle, uh, based on some experience, we gain like uh, on a daily basis or a monthly basis or a yearly basis, we can, you know, say, okay, now, now like 10% or 20% or 15% will be going for this and this and this. Actually, we build a model here in our mind, like, like we build a, a, a kind of a decision making uh, to see if, okay, if we do this, if we do this, if we do this, then this is like a decision making system you already built in your mind. Like if, if you have extra money, then you can do this. If you have less money, then you should not do this. So that, that's the idea. The machine learning or AI depends on creating some model, some smart model. And when we say smart uh, or, or, or uh, we, we say it because most of these models that we are trying to build uh, are based on some nature, uh, like, like either the, the way the brain think or, uh, or we sometimes call it nature selection, like how bees, how uh, birds uh, works or, or find food, how fish uh, and so on. So that's, that's, that's the idea. The idea is to develop some sort of model that can help you to estimate or predict uh, a future or uh, diagnosis some problems with some collected amount of data. That's, that's a basic idea. So for, for, for the type of machine learning techniques that we used, we tried many actually. We tried uh, neural network, we tried uh, decision tree, we tried deep learning. And uh, I uh, actually, I would like to mention that, that we collected real data from a sleep center in Texas with collaboration with a physician, uh, uh, Prof Professor Salim Sorani over there. So we got right, like real data from a sleep center with some, some kind of features. And we were able to actually to submit a proposal uh, to University of Connecticut. Uh, this, they have some kind of uh, proof of concept uh, called for proposal. And we got some money and we were able to develop some results for that. And, and the goal of, of, of our results is actually to help uh, minimize the effort and the cost in diagnosis, the uh, sleep uh, data that is collected, mainly the ECG signal. But we figured out that this is not might be enough because as I said, the sleep center, uh, you know, I mean, you need to pay a lot of money. So we thought about something uh, uh, related to demographic data. So, so uh, the, the sex of the people, the people, the, the BMI, the uh, neck size, uh, the height, the weight, you know, all this data is collected normally from patients. So we said, is, is there is a way that we can utilize this data before even the patient go to a sleep center to help us to detect if there is an apnea or not. That, that was another thing we did. No, this is fantastic. Dr. Salim Surani, Professor Salim Surani is a prolific researcher and we had a privilege to interview him for our channel here uh, several months ago as well. Uh, his work is phenomenal. So can you share a little bit more about your model? You know, you talked about uh, this uh, uh, deep learning uh, neural networks and especially branching, uh, branching uh, tree mechanism you yeah. utilize the real world data uh, for derivation validation cohorts. Have you done an internal validation, external validation? And as you said, that you need more data, which is so true because you know AI is data hungry as good data, good quality data is the backbone of any machine learning model. So take us a little bit more in detail, uh, what the methodology you used, how much, how many patients data, what was your internal and external validation and so far, and what are the next steps? Absolutely. Uh, so, so the data was collected from about uh, 650 patients, 
Of course, uh, we figure out that there are some problems with the data, some attributes or some you know, uh, elements of the data is not really complete. So we had to either uh, fill out this data by some kind of approximation or we had to remove the data. And actually one of our findings was to, to group the data. We figured out that if we group the data based on sex, like male, female, like based on age before, I mean, like age more than 50 or less than 50, uh, maybe uh, the uh, race, like Caucasian, Hispanic, you know, we figured out that we can get better performance uh, of, of the models, like, like better accuracy. That's how we measure the, the goodness or badness of, of our model by the accuracy, accuracy of classification. Actually, in, as you said, exactly, deep neural network is hunger for data. And, and that's really a big issue. So, so we try to, to, to implement like tradi traditional machine learning techniques, like as I mentioned, logistic regression, decision tree support, vector machine, neural network. So all these are more traditional. So, so based on maybe limited number of records, you can get some results. But with the ECG data, which is, as I mentioned, like data collected uh, for eight, nine hours, uh, I mean, we, we had enough data, so we were able to use deep neural network to, to classify or be able to detect if there is an apnea or no apnea. Um, what we are doing right now, we actually, um, again, we collected some more data. So now we have uh, more records actually with accurate measurements, about maybe 1,000 records. And recently, we were able to develop some, some nice results. We plan to submit it to uh, some uh, conferences very soon. And uh, one more thing, I, I had some of my undergrad students were working on that at Southern here. And uh, we tried a different set of data collected from questionnaire. So from questionnaire, things are much easier. Uh, although the performance will not be best, but, but we were able to collect some data and get some good performance with so, some questionnaire really, you know, you know there is different classes of questions. Some questions were, were very, very good, uh, uh, has many nice attributes that help to uh, diagnosis correctly the apnea. So we utilize that. So I have some number of undergrad students working on that. I had also some uh, postdoctor uh, was working with me on that. Actually, we had a team not only in USA, but this team was like worldwide. Uh, we've been working together to get things done. And recently uh, we, yeah, go ahead. So, so it's a great opportunity for uh, the folks who are looking to do clinical research. Uh, they, can, they can reach out to you and contribute in writing those articles. Two very brief questions. One is, is your application available? Is it available for uh, practices and hospitals to use it uh, uh, widely? Uh, what is the status of the application? Yeah, actually, actually, we, we have done uh, implemented two application. One, uh, we already published it in, in 2019 in, in an IEEE conference, and, and this is available. I mean, I, I can share it. Uh, I didn't post it on our website, but I, I shared it with Dr. Salib Sarani, who was physician, so they can test it. And we have another application. Uh, uh, this one, we actually working on uh, patented. So uh, we submitted an invention disclosure. Uh, and we plan to work to make it like more uh, professional software development, not just in the lab, but but also for real world application. So that that's what we have now. Fantastic. My last question, COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, there's a studies coming out out of it. So what's your take on the impact on uh, sleep or, or sleep apnea or cerebral disorder during this pandemic? So very briefly, you want to touch upon for to our viewers. Yeah, actually, there was another idea from another physician uh, working with uh, Dr. Sarani, and uh, he uh, thought, actually, it's not, it's not my idea, it's his idea, and uh, we thought about it uh, a little bit, which is how can we uh, collect data from tweets and, and then try to, uh, you know, detect from these tweets uh, if there is somebody suffering from uh, sleep disorder or an apnea or something like that. So, so that, that's an idea we should pursue. Uh, and uh, I remember the physician, his name is Raymond. So, so we talked about it, but we didn't pursue it yet. So I hope in the future, we can continue working on that. Absolutely. Well, the use of social media is increasing, especially in advancing science. So I would like to thank you so much for your time today, uh, Dr. Uh, Asheda. 
Uh, this has been a privilege uh, to be uh, with you today. We hope to bring you back again. Uh, for our viewers, uh, please like, subscribe, and write in the comment section what you liked. And if you have any questions for Dr. Shera, we'll be happy to connect you uh, folks, either asking questions about his application, collaboration, or if you want to do research uh, uh, traineeship or remote research possibilities with Dr. Shera, Dr. Shura Surani. Thank you so much, Dr. Shera. Thank you, Raymond. I appreciate uh, giving me this opportunity. Thanks a lot.